Now, we've all been frustrated by queues at airport security, despite the rollout of increasingly sophisticated body scanning technology. But the FTSE 100 engineering solutions company Smiths Group has this week launched a new scanner that it claims will be a game-changer for border policing. The new X-ray scanner from its Smiths Detection Unit is powered by diffraction technology, which can identify substances and discriminate between materials based on their molecular structure. Well, joining me now to talk about this is Richard Thompson. He's Vice President of Marketing at Smiths Detection. Richard, welcome to you. I mean, a lot of existing scanners are based on the same technology that underpins CT scans that we see in hospitals. This sounds completely different. Oh, good afternoon, Ian, and thanks for having you having us on. So, um, actually, the technology is not that new. It was discovered back in 1912 uh, in Germany, in fact. Um, it's, it's a very clever technology which, by studying the angle at which uh, X-rays are scattered when you aim them at an object, you can get very, very accurate material discrimination. So, so what this does is, um, as I say, give you a very, very accurate material discrimination, but the tricky bit is to take this technology, which for 100 years or so has been primarily in laboratories, and, uh, and field it, industrialize it, and actually bring it into an application of sort of high volume, high speed use, which is what you typically see in, in airport for baggage handling, uh, or indeed for fast freight forwarders and express forwarders. What are the types of materials that are commonly confused? So if you take an existing CT X-ray system, it's exceptionally good at detecting uh, explosives, which, which is obviously one of its primary uses. Um, the challenge, however, is that there are a number of uh, items, as, as, as you currently identify, which uh, bear similar densities and characteristics to explosives, which is why when you're traveling through an airport, um, you'll typically find 20 to 30% of the bags uh, are diverted to have another look, either by an analyst or indeed for the bag to be opened its, itself for, for a closer look. So um, typically, you know, things like plastics, uh, ceramics, rubber itself can resemble plastic explosives. Indeed, uh, foodstuffs uh, such as uh, cheese even uh, can, uh, can resemble uh, explosives, which is which is why, as I'm sure many of your viewers will know, uh, from having your bag opened at recheck uh, to find that it's only a, a, a only a, a food stuff as opposed to anything more uh, more more threatening. Yeah, what's what's the order of book looking like, Richard? So we're here in Germany actually at the moment. So this is this is our launch week. Um, the remainder of this year is going to be a number of uh, live trials uh, at selected airports and freight forwarders uh, around the world, uh, including Frankfurt as, as one example. So we'll be conducting these proof of concepts through, through, as I say, the remainder of this calendar year. And in parallel with that, we'll be going through the necessary regulatory approvals, which are necessary for it to be put into live operation. And we expect to, to get to full rate production um, late this year, early, early uh, 2025. And where will the machines be manufactured? They'll be manufactured here in Germany. OK, so roll out, if, assuming you get all the approvals, then probably around this time next year, from what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. And, and as I say, there's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a strictly regulated uh, environment in which, in which we operate. So uh, we have to conduct that in, in a number of different locations. And then, yes, this time next year, as I say, full rate production, and we're very, very optimistic based on the interest which we've had uh, over the past several months of engaging with, with the regulators, with the airports, the airlines, and as I say, the fast freight forwarders. I've seen you've been quoted on this, Richard, as saying it's going to render sniffer dogs redundant at airports. <laughs> uh, sniffer dogs will not be made redundant. I mean, indeed, this technology can carry out the, the role of identifying narcotics uh, such as sniffer dogs do. But it's really for, as I say, the sort of high speed, high volume application. Um, sniffer dogs will still have their use. And so it's, it's very much complementary to a number of other techniques for, um, for, for, for narcotics detection and explosives detection. I think a lot of people will be very happy to hear that. And how rapidly um, can these machines assess what's going through the scanner? Do, would, they be, would they be markedly more quick or more slow than existing technology? So, so typically what we're doing is using the machine to, as I say, resolve the alarms which you're getting from CT scanners at the moment. So you're dealing with, as I say, 20 to 30% of the bags. 
Um, depending on how deeply you want to examine that bag, um, it, it, it can take, uh, you know, they typically operate at 0.2 meters per second, which is the same speed as a passenger checkpoint. But in a whole baggage application, it can be, it can, one machine can serve multiple high-speed baggage machines. So, so in fact, although it might take a fraction longer, it's not material in terms of the overall operational uh, necessities of an airport. OK, fascinating topic, Richard. We do appreciate you spending time to talk to us today. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thanks very much.